Uh, currently, she works in body positivity and, and coaches women on uh, a way to feel positive about the body, not by just dieting or juice cleansing, something that is for everyone and supposed to work for everyone, but something personal to them, uh, working on the relationship to the body rather than just what they do and what they look like. All right, please welcome Kim. Hello. Ooh, fancy tech thing. I'm really bad with tech guys. Okay. <laughs> Do I just press the play button? Uh, okay. Uh, I'm 80 years old. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Kim. Uh, thanks for coming, first of all. Thanks for being here. Um, so I'll just read this for you. This is, you know, my, my little pitch. I'm a teacher, writer, speaker. I work with smart women who overthink, focus on perfection, and are tired of feeling guilty for eating an extra cookie and only going to the gym one time this week. Basically, you can stop feeling like shit all the time, and it, you don't have to go on the latest sugar cleanse or tell yourself a mantra every morning, like, you're welcome to, but, like, there's other options, I promise. Um, so this is a bit about what I'm going to share. Having a dream job I hated, starting my own business, wanting someone to tell me what to do, going against norms, and lastly, accepting that I can't change the world. Um, so here we go, the dream job. So I, let me put this little piece of paper down. So, okay, I was this very type A high school, college student, you know, did all the things I was supposed to do, had this like great plan, did my internships, was like, I'm going to be this powerhouse PR woman. I don't know why. I think I watched a lot of like Sex in the City or something, but like I was like really into it. And um, I did the internships. I was like so good with my like, you know, 20 years old with my business cards going out networking. And um, anyway, I got the job that I wanted in corporate PR. And I was like, that's it. Like check, like life sorted. You know, it's like this thing where you think I'm going to do this one thing like and now, yeah, done, check. I've like done life now, go me. Um, and I got in there and I, I hated it. Like, n not initially awful, but like by the first month, I was like, this is the worst thing ever. Um, I was miserable. I was started to get really depressed. I was sick. I got physically sick a lot of the time, just a lot of stress. They also didn't pay us enough um, for anyone that works in PR, I feel you. Um, and yeah, I just, I hated it. At, but I, I was in this place where from the outside, everyone was saying to me, oh my God, how'd you get that job? That's amazing. Like you're doing so well. But inside I was like, this is the worst. All I wanted to do every weekend was sleep all weekend. I didn't socialize. I didn't do anything. It was work, 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 sleep. And I was getting praise for that. And it was, you know, it's, it's sad, but a lot of people do get praise for that kind of thing. And it's not great. Um, and what ended up happening was I just looked ahead and was like, I don't want to be doing this in 10 years. Like those people that are 10 years down the line, they look miserable as well. It's not like you see someone and they're like, wow, I'm, here I am, like living my best life. And like, no, they're, they're not happy as well. So I was like, that's not for me. Um, so yeah, I just quit which, without a plan, which was um, really a great idea. But um, in the t at the moment, I knew it was what I had to do, even though everyone was like, you are crazy. And maybe I was, and I don't think everyone should just go and quit their job, but you know, sometimes you need to, and I did. Um, but then, so I had this moment, right, after I quit, and I was like, woo, you know, like, you're like, the gates open, like, everything's amazing, you're so happy, and then like, it's immediately followed by, oh my God, what the fuck have I done? And you're like, you just don't, you know, you're like, have I ruined my life now? I had this job, what do I do? like real feelings and so it's yeah you go from like feeling like this is the best I can sleep till 11 to oh but what am I supposed to do now so I won't bore you with the details but there was a lot of just like thinking about what the hell I wanted to do and what I was good at what my natural skills are what I th thought I was supposed to do and what I wanted to do and I came to this kind of place of working with girls and women and something about uh, nutrition and it all kind of blended together but um, in that space I was still like okay great what do I do now what do I do now I started to get this idea so I, I my basically my business plan was I'm just gonna take people for coffee which like is not necessarily the right thing to do and I've learned that now from listening to other people like don't just email people and say can I pick your brain for coffee like I did that like you're not supposed to do that you're supposed to you know 
offer something you can help with. But that was my business plan. I was like, great, I'm on top of this, change the world. Um, but so I'd have these meetings with people from like different industries and things I thought I wanted to do. And I, uh, yeah, I just, I'd go in and be like, that was a great chat and then leave and feel like, oh, I didn't get what I wanted because I basically wanted someone to be like, here, do these five things next and you'll have your life sorted out. Um, and I really wanted to like go to the library and have it be like Kim's Guide to Life and like do the five steps and have everything sorted and like again like spoiler that's not how it works but um, but yeah like I just I just wanted someone to tell me exactly what I was supposed to do and you know that that never happens and I still kind of stayed on that path for a while even as I was building my coaching business and I was doing workshops and. Uh, speaking and teaching and doing a whole variety of things with people of all ages, but I still was kind of listening to other people. And I think one of the main fuck ups within that is that I wish I had listened to myself sooner because if I listened to myself sooner, I would have known like what track was best, like what I should do. And then I just have to try things. And no matter what kind of business you're in, you just have to try things, whether you're like, you know, sending out snack boxes, coaching people, whatever you're doing, like you have to try things to know what's going to work. But I spent so much time wanting and wishing someone else would tell me what to do. And you just, you can't, you can't do that. And the best way is to fuck up and fuck up a lot and, you know, all the time. Um, so yeah, so the transition was that I finally stopped listening to everyone else. I started, um, you know, doing whatever I wanted to do, which is, you know, a lot of times people were telling me, okay, if you're going to work with women and work on health, you have to sell people weight loss. No one will buy anything from you unless you're selling weight loss. And I was like, no, that's not true. I don't want to do that. I don't also want to sell weight loss, like disguised as something else with a different name, because that's bullshit too. Um, so I just, I stopped listening to people telling me what I could and couldn't do and started doing it my way and started to feel good about that and started to enjoy it and started to get more clients and just feel better. Um, and yeah, you're going to be judged all the time, whether people judge you to your face or, you know, in a Facebook group or something, you're going to get judged. You just have to go for things and, you know, experiment and see what happens. Um, yeah, my, my most current fuck up is, well, I guess it's not a fuck up, but just the, that I can't change the world. You know, I, I think a lot of people in the coaching space or these health spaces think, I'm going to do this, I'm going to help so many people. And, you know, it, sometimes it's hard when, you know, you have a friend and, and then they're going on a juice cleanse and you're like, no, but why don't you just work with me? I know what I'm talking about. But, like, I know I've planted a seed, I'm making a difference, I'm helping someone. Um, and that person might come back to me like six months down the line or a year down the line, but I know that like that seed is planted. So I have to accept that I can't change everyone. I can't do everything. I have to, you know, ask for help, ask for support, take chances, try things. Um, and that's kind of what works, which is an ongoing lesson. Um, it's a little summary slide of things I think are important. It's okay to fuck up. Uh, if you never fuck up, that's the real failure. If you're just trying to do everything right all the time, like, there's no point in that. Like, what what are you doing? You're just going to be like everyone else, and you're not going to be that person that people are inspired by that makes a difference that you're, you know, you're at a talk listening to someone, you're like, yes, I want to I want to ha do that business. Well, like, you need to try things and get rejected and mess up and fail. Um, three is my favorite that I'm always learning that when you think you have it figured out life will throw something else at you and you'll fuck up again but like don't worry because like remember one it's okay also I'm looking at this slide right now guys this is a fuck up look at that numbering that's not how you make a numbered list I don't know what that is but um at, that happened so there you go number one um and then surround yourself with good people that this is a really big one for me because when I switched career paths, a lot, I, I didn't have any friends that were working in startups or were entrepreneurs. I didn't know anyone. All my friends were like lawyers, bankers, like that, that was the crew, like it, people in politics, like no one was like doing this. Um, and so, yeah, you don't have to get rid of people, but make sure you have someone in your life, at least one person where you can kind of talk to and rant and complain and that, that gets you. It, maybe like you've just come here for the first time and you connect with one person, like get their, get their card, save it, talk to them, like reach out, ask for help, ask for support, because that is so important. And if you don't have that, it's really lonely. Um, and yeah, that's, 
come check out my website if you're tired of feeling guilty for eating a cookie and complaining about you know, how you didn't go to the gym multiple times this week. And um, this is the last point. Don't be a Sharon. So sorry, is anyone here named Sharon? Because like, apologies if you are, but don't be a Sharon. This person that's like, I'm so bad for eating this cake. Like, no, Sharon, like, you're fine. Don't worry about it. You're not doing anything bad. And people do that so often. I'm so fat because I did this. I'm so bad. You're not bad. No one died. It's okay. So don't be a Sharon, all right? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay. What is a moment where you felt judged and what was that like and what did you do about it? Uh, that's quite frequently. Um, but a moment that... <sighs> I'm, I'm thinking of how in-depth I want to go with this. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of times um, my message is very much like don't go, don't listen to diets, like listen to your body instead, because like, spoiler, it knows what it's doing, um, but that's not as sexy as like, whatever, do this like, really cool thing where you only eat vegetables and then you're starving. Um, but yeah, like, so a lot of times the judgment comes from not people that I work with or potential clients, but more people that are already in the the wellness industry that are well established in what they're doing. Um, maybe like a personal trainer or just like someone that maybe works at a place where they're offering like a sugar cleanse for 20 days. And that's where the judgment comes. And sometimes they want to say something to me uh, rarely do people because I come out like all guns blazing and I most people when they know me they know that like better not say anything but um, it's happened before and it's made me uncomfortable and angry and mad and so I've reached out to people that also um, share similar views about health and women and bodies and I've like just kind of rallied around them and with them and you know, felt supported by them, and maybe they say something for me, or I say something, or we sh we kind of like double team it and all say something together. But it happens a lot from um, in this industry with um, people that are trying to make a profit off making women feel bad about themselves. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that question was going to come up. So I don't want to say you can stalk me on LinkedIn if you want to if you want to see. You can probably figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> In case anyone's here that worked out where I worked. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> oh, sorry. About being too offensive. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so I have thought about that, and I've tried to do it, but then when I do that, it just, like, d feels awful, and it doesn't come off as being me. The question was, like, do I ever feel like I have to be too authentic? Uh, for, like, should I be less authentic? And, um, yeah, like, I think that's why I didn't work in corporate PR. Like, I think it's why it wasn't, like, I did a great job, and it was, like, I like some of the hustle, but, like, I just like I can't not be me and I know like people sometimes are like have different versions of themselves depending on who they're talking to I'm just like I don't know what that's like and so anytime I've tried to be like a lesser version of me it just it feels like woo, like woo I don't know and I can't do it like I actually like can't do it and it feels like wrong and bad and then it comes off just so flat and so I've just like embraced like being me and like all of that entails. And sometimes that's too much for people, but I've learned to just like embrace the too much because I'm not for everyone and I'm totally okay with that. Um, Cause not everyone is for me. And something I always tell people is you don't like everyone and not everyone's gonna like you, so it's okay. Um, so yeah, I just embrace being too much and a little bit crazy and very authentic. <laughs> Yeah. 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 
Okay, yeah, the question was about um, how did I go about kind of figuring out what was the right thing for me. Um, so I traveled around Italy for like a month and ate lots of delicious food, and that was fun. But um, <laughs> lots of like introspection. Um, some of the questions I asked myself were like, very coaching type questions but I I just was like what was I what did I like to do when I was younger like when I was a kid like what did I naturally gravitate to and what did I used to like to do and when did I stop doing that and why did I stop doing that um, and is there anything in that stopping me from doing that now and um, yeah just like look making lists of like literally like lists like what I'm good at what I don't think I'm good at what other people tell me I'm good at because a lot of times like the, especially like what other people tell you you're good at if you ask a friend that like they'll come up with all these things and you're like wow you walk away with like feeling great about yourself but also like it does highlight things for you that you might not have realized yourself um but yeah I just like uh, talking about like the I had like these different times where I was like okay I'll go back to school and become a dietitian and all you know I had like I really did have like a lot of coffees with people and um, I did a lot of different things. I had um, one time I was like doing three different part-time jobs and I had a couple different volunteer jobs. I was just experimenting. I like looked at my career as like then experiment at that point because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. So I just tried out different things in different settings with different types of companies like corporate, but also nonprofits and smaller and bigger and different ages to see kind of what felt best and what I enjoyed best and what I was best at. And then like built upon that and went from there. If that answers your question. No. I get a lot. No, I haven't. Um, you know, I get people that, like, disagree, like I, that I was saying. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I haven't gotten any hate mail yet. I get, um, I'm not, I'm, like, thinking, I'm, like, oh, God. Uh, no, yeah, I've gotten, you know, like, Facebook comments, like, people disagreeing with me. And then, like, everyone I know comes in and is, like, you're wrong. This is why. So that's fun. Um, but, yeah, no, I get, like, I get like nice mail that like is like feel good mail where people are like I had one that made me feel really good where someone said um, they were showing their daughter uh, my Instagram page because they wanted their daughter to have a role model that was like me and I was like oh my god how, like those kind of things are like the nice like loving comments I get and I'm like and then every time so I have a folder now where I keep like those kind of notes it's called like love folder so every time I like feel bad and like I'm like I'm fucking up today then like I just read that sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but um yeah no hate mail yet just like stupid people on Facebook you know that happens Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't be a Sharon.